this thing running, I gotta take you off the stand here. Okay, I've got the vertical head back to get back together. It scared me there, I almost thought I got shot. Um, and I'm running the bearing in, the bearing chain, and I'm running the thing um, just about 350 RPM. Um, the, the quill is just barely warm, and uh, I'm just going to keep increasing the, the speed and uh, feel if there's excessive heat. I'll shut this off. Uh, now, now this um, this quill here, it, it has quill feed. It's pretty cool. Only a couple inches, but I tell you, two inches is better than nothing. Now, these bearings are Timken bearings, Type 0 Timken bearings. And from past experience and observation of this workhead that has the same type of Timken bearings in it. Now, this workhead has to be more precise than that mill spindle. And what we found, I found myself and others too, if you take this apart and take the bearings out of it, put it back together, it's not going to run true. And uh, this is something that, ha that has to run really true. Um, you just can't do it. Uh, to get these things as accurate as they are, the factory assembles them in those Type 0 bearings and then grinds the tapers in the bearings. So, you know, you got to think about that. Or if you don't think about it, maybe it doesn't, uh, doesn't matter. I don't know. But the one thing I can tell you is that um, dividing heads have the same bearings. And uh, this dividing head, I'll, I'll insert some photos later when I complete this mill. But uh, this thing was solidly rusted in land and water. And what saved it was the, the, uh, just the way it was sitting in the junkyard. And, and that the, uh, uh, the whole cavity was pumped full of grease, just like this thing. And that's, that's what saved this head uh, in, in, in the scrapyard. Was it actually the kind of the way the machine was tilted, kind of diverted uh, water coming in through the top here over to this side and caused a little bit of damage over here, but it, it, not bad. But didn't ruin the quill or get into the bearings. So what I did was it, there's the dessert here is I pumped grease through this and cleaned the bearings that way. I think I put three tubes of uh, red electric motor grease through it. And I pumped grease through it and, and, until it came out both ends clean and rotated a little bit as I was doing it and it worked. Um, I've uh, taken up the, uh, in the last video, I've taken up some of the play and the bearings and it was, you know, they could have uh, put better parts in there probably. But uh, I'm going to show you something on this that's kind of funny, you know, this, uh, or maybe not funny, it was pretty serious at the time that they put this, uh, these machines out in a pretty big hurry because there was a war going on. And uh, the retaining uh, washer just used uh, uh, punch marks to keep the uh, nut from backing off. and. Uh, it backed off. It, the nut slacked off and that's why it had play. So I tightened it back up and uh, I did uh, use a uh, chisel to raise the metal to hopefully it'll keep where it's supposed to be. And it, <clears throat> when I was adjusting that, I actually found the original factory marks that somebody scratched in there. And uh, when I set it back, the the original marks are set just a little bit ahead when I was playing around with that end plate. And I think that's going to be fine. Now, this is a cut here on this uh, piece of aluminum that I made uh, before the adjustment. And it's not that bad. I mean, it's acceptable to me. 
Uh, if it needs to be better, you know, I could leave uh, ten thousandths and take it over to the jig board and put a better finish on it, and I'll be doing some of that stuff a little bit later. So after I get the spindle run in, I'm going to take another cut on this and, and compare it to that. There's a little bit of lines and stuff. We'll, we'll see what happens here. I, th I think that'll help. Now this is pretty cool. I'm going to get over here. Hold on, i got to grab something. There it is. Now, the speed chart um, has no, uh, really anything to do with this machine. Now, uh, the top speed of 1200 turns out to be a top speed of 1600, or 1585 RPMs. And the lowest speed is, 42 and uh, it's it's got this too now here here's uh, uh, the way things actually are this is the actually actual speeds down there now let me get that drop that I get back over here and if you look down in here yeah. there's this magic window it's kind of messed up been there it got rust in there and it should have a glass cover I'm gonna do that but I'm gonna paint that black you can see the speed numbers in there. Well, it has nothing to do with this chart. Those speed numbers. And those speed numbers actually have nothing to do with the, the actual speed of the machine. You see that? I, uh, some of the old machines had several levers. And uh, then the latest machines they called uh, dial type. You could like look across from the table and see what speed it's at. This is kind of a dial and lever type. I don't know. It's kind of, kind of funny. But uh, so what I got to do is um, I'm going to paint that and, and, and paint the correct speeds in there. And this chart shows that it's an eight speed machine. But they're showing it with a two-speed motor. But the machine's actually a 10-speed machine. So <laughs> they got this out in a hurry. They, they really did. And I think it's still conformed to the warboard. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I tell you what, with a top speed of 1,600, uh, this is a hot little, hot little unit. You know, that, that's serious speed, and uh, this is going to make it a lot more useful on smaller parts for me. I'm, I'm just thrilled about those higher speeds. You know, that's great. And it, it uh, runs uh, pretty smooth in that top speed, then the next one's down is uh, 1,200 RPMs. 1212 actually and it runs exceptionally smooth in that in that gear. So I, I'm pretty happy with what's going on here. Uh, this machine is uh, uh, was drug out in the weather and I guess I'm just doing a partial restoration. I, uh, I just uh, taken care of places where the water really damaged things and things are real sticky. Uh, but what I need, to, what needs to happen is just run the machine. And I'm going to finish this upper part here. And uh, this unit here can remain in place. And then an adapter put in here and use a regular type A horizontal arbor. And uh, that's one of the things I'm doing here. So adjusting the spindle. And I'll finish that bushing thing, and then the whole upper end of this machine is done. I don't have to do anything. And uh, then I have to concentrate on the, uh, of the electricals here and uh, the knee. And uh, I might have to uh, uh, pull the uh, guts out of the knee at the bottom because I might have a gasket leak that I have to deal with. And that's just par for the course and uh, the uh, this electrical stuff here it, it had a rat's nest in it and, and uh, there's actually some bones in there too 
and it's just it's creepy and I'm working on it and uh, I'm going to probably pull that entire thing out and get it on the bench and clean it I don't know, we'll see what happens I uh, I was working on this and I dropped it a year ago over that uh, radio drill press and it just sat here while I was trying to save that mess out there and uh, that worked out that drill press is saved this thing saved it's a, it's just going to be a really good machine I think you know it's clunky and it's old but it uh, it'll do an awful lot and uh, in an earlier video I pointed out the shortcomings is the the knee is all the way down here and uh, there at best there's only nine inches of uh, distance between the spindle nose and the table so but the machine is really pretty versatile it, it uh, I, I don't know <laughs> I'm just I'm quite happy with this thing and, and all I've got in it is you know just some cleaning materials and uh, 500 bucks and a couple of cheap tool holders and I'm on the road pretty much okay I'm gonna load this video and I got a bunch more coming up so Thanks for looking in. Bye now.